Hey, this is Andrew Aversa with Impact Soundworks, and today I'd like to showcase our newest virtual instrument, Pearl Concert Grand, for contact and contact player. Pearl is a deeply sampled Yamaha C7 Grand Piano recorded in a concert hall with four microphone perspectives. We have the close and the stage mics, which is what you were just hearing, and then there's the monophonic pedal mic under the piano providing a nice full-bodied sound, and then the hall mic, which adds, of course, the ambience of the hall that the piano was recorded in. So let's hear it with all four mic positions now. You can easily blend between the microphones using the user interface we have here. And the goal was to make something that was not only a joy to play, but also very easy to edit and fit into any style of music you might be making. So when you have all four microphones enabled, it has uh, a bit more of a classical and traditional sound. You can control the volume of each microphone, the stereo width, the offset, which is the sample offset of each microphone. So by increasing the offset knob, it's making the attack a bit snappier, but just for that microphone. And then you can also control the EQ and compression for each of these channels. If you'd like to do mixing in your own DAW, you also have uh, an output selector from Contact itself. Here, Contact is only configured with one stereo output, but if you have eight outs or 16 outs, then you could choose between any of those and then mix in your host. Just as an example, let's play with the stereo a bit. I'll turn down the pedal mic and the stage mic so we just have the close and hall mics. And then I'll make the close microphone mono. Or let's say we turn up the stage and we want the stage to be very wide. Or maybe some combination, maybe we want a mono hall, turn down the close mic, and then turn up the pedal, which is mono by default. We'll return these to the default settings, and then take a look at the global effects. So Pearl features uh, an effects rack with a compressor, tape saturation, transient design, four band parametric EQ, and uh, most notably a convolution reverb with over 30 custom impulse responses. By default, the chamber concert impulse is enabled. And that's a very, uh, it's about a two and a half second uh, decay concert hall, but we could change to something much longer. For example, the uh, cosmic reverb. And to showcase this, let me actually turn down the other microphones. So you're just hearing the dry, close mic. Very lovely for uh, ambient and atmospheric music. Of course, if we switch it to something like the uh, live room, this has a much shorter tail. And this is more useful if you're going for uh, perhaps like a jazz kind of sound. If we turn off the reverb altogether, then the piano has a completely different tone than the, uh, the one that we started with.
Since Perl is very deeply sampled, we have not only a wide range of dynamic layers and round robins, but we also have sustain pedal on and off samples. So when you hold the sustain pedal down, you're not hearing an emulation of uh, just the notes sustaining longer, but you're actually hearing a different set of recordings entirely with a piano body and piano resonance intact. So here's with no sustain pedal. And here's with. And you also get a realistic noise when you lift up the pedal. Taking a look at the second page of the interface, there are some great features for people that want to really get under the hood and change, for example, the dynamic response. So here is an editable velocity curve, and you can magnify it. Uh, and this basically controls um, how the MIDI data is interpreted by Perl. So let's say you have a controller that's very uh, heavy, and you really have to hit the keys hard to get the higher velocities. In that case, you might want to use a light velocity curve, so that will scale the MIDI input up. And we have light, very light, and of course lightest. And then we have the reverse. So if you have a very sensitive controller, you may want to use one of these curves, the heavy settings. You can also cut certain velocity ranges out entirely. So you could use the floor, for example, which cuts out the very lowest velocities, or a ceiling. And then of course you can create your own. So you can even have an inverted uh, velocity curve you can draw with the right mouse click or something completely random, although that would be stupid. So then you can just hit the undo button, and there you go, you're back to normal. We also have microtuning. So this is useful in case you want to use a non-standard uh, scale. So let's say Pythagorean, which isn't too far out of the ordinary, but uh, most pianos are tuned in equal temperament, so this is a bit different. Or how about just intonation? Again, slightly different. Most of the time, you'll probably want to stick to default, but it's nice to have the ability to create whatever scale you'd like using whatever root key. You can also save and load presets of your choosing, and then you can even share them with other users. The same goes for velocity. These controls here are useful for changing the, uh, the touch and the feel of the instrument. So to demonstrate this, let me go back to just the close mic. So naturally, when you play lower velocities, you hear recordings of the lighter dynamics being played. That makes sense, but you can change it so that when you play lightly, the actual output volume is not scaled. So for example, if you want to play a piece that uh, uses quiet dynamics, but you want it to be played at a louder volume, uh, you can reduce this knob. So there I'm playing very lightly, but it's actually playing loudly. Uh, if I turn this knob back up, you can hear now it's scaling as it would by default. There's also brightness, which is naturally, again, controlled by velocity. But you might, for example, uh, not want that effect to be in place if you want to have a much darker sound for the piano. So that too can be scaled up and down to your choosing. The release noise of the instrument is split into two categories. We have the key release noise, which is very, very important in giving the piano a sense of life. And then there's the pedal noise, which is uh, when you put the sustain pedal down and you play notes and then you lift the sustain pedal up, you want to hear the sound of the strings being muted, uh, just the ones that were resonating. So uh, for this, I'm going to turn this way up. Normally, you wouldn't have the releases turned up so high. I'll play loudly so you can hear it. So obviously this is cranked way up, but if you turn it down, you get a more natural sound. And it just adds that little bit of life that's so important when you're using any kind of sampled instrument. And the pedal noise, it's the same thing. So if I turn this up, again, this is going to sound uh, a bit overbearing, but it's just to demonstrate what these sound like. So you can hear the strings being muted, 
by the dampers. Most likely you'll want to keep these on the default settings, but it's nice to have the ability to change those however you'd like. Then there's the attack, decay, sustain, and release of the instrument. So if we increase the attack, then it's going to sound more uh, washed out. That's useful for more sound design purposes. And again, the default is just a, a tiny, tiny bit of attack. Uh, you can also change the sustain and decay. So if you want to have a very snappy decay of the instrument. Hear how quickly the notes are decaying there. And then the, uh, the release as well. We have a selection of instrument presets by default. These are just mic mixes with different effects. Uh, and then you can save and load your own presets. But uh, before I finish up the video, I just wanted to play a little bit more with a few different mic mixes and showcase uh, how versatile Pearl can be. One last thing, Pearl comes in both 16-bit and 24-bit flavors, so depending on how much memory you have and what kind of bitrate you want to use, you can switch between the two seamlessly. Also, you'll notice that we have various light patches. So this patch, by default, with all four microphones loaded and contact standard settings, uses about 4.6 gigabytes of memory. If you're on a laptop or an older machine, that might be a lot, in which case you can just turn off any mics that you don't need. So there you go, that cuts it just about in half. But these light patches reduce it even further. You can turn off the round robins, you can turn off the sustain pedal samples, for example, or both. And then the very lightest patch reduces things uh, quite significantly by about 90%. Uh, so for example, if you turn off the sustain pedal and round robin samples, then what was once 2.6 gigabytes is now less than one. Or with the lightest patch, that's only 400 megabytes, and if you turn off all but one mic position, now it's only 200. And even one mic position with the lightest patch still sounds really, really wonderful. And it's still very fun to play. For me, Pearl has replaced all my other pianos. I really think this is one of the most beautiful sampled instruments around. It can work so well for a wide variety of uses, whether you're doing jazz, pop, rock, uh, even EDM and trance music. I'm using it in that myself. Uh, cinematic stuff. It really covers the whole range so well. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. I hope you enjoy the sound of Pearl and that you'll check it out. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send us an email. Anyway, this is Andrew Reversa signing off.